about this Tinder experiment uh, that this chick did. I don't even know what her name is. I've read several articles about it. Um, Return of Kings uh, put something up yesterday. I, talk, I actually talked to my brother about this a little bit earlier today. Um, <laughs> and you guys were in the chat saying, hey, Donovan, did you hear about this whole Tinder experiment thing? So I did some reading, did some research, watched some videos. This Tinder experiment put true female nature on display for all the world to see. And there were so many red pill moments and so many red pill truths. It is ridiculous. So here's what happened, guys. So this, 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 this I don't know. I guess she's an Instagram model, basically an Instagram model. She tricks a hundred guys into showing up to Union Square in New York City. So she gets on stage. Like, like these guys show up. They think that they're the only ones who are going to be seeing this girl. And they show up and, you know, they figure out at some point, okay, I'm not the only guy that's here. Obviously, this is some sort of thing because there's a stage, there's cameras everywhere, right? There's a bunch of people there. So this chick gets up on stage and she says, well, give me a second. Okay, wait a minute. I thought I'd freezed up. Sorry about that. So she says, dating apps are hard. So I figured, how about I have them all come and meet me here in person? Right? So what that says to me is that I want, <laughs> I want all of these guys to convert. In other words, this is a detention whore thing. She wants all these guys to show up just to try to date her. This is an attention whore. Like this is, she did this all for attention. And listen, she pulled it off. She got it. So then she says, some guys may be disappointed, but this is a great story, right? Guys, she knows guys are pissed off. And she knew this beforehand because she showed up with two bodyguards. Guys, listen. Nothing is more dangerous than a beta male who's been humiliated. And she and other women, they know this, which is why she beefed up her security. She knew that there was a chance that an incel might try to hurt her or worse for tricking them. And by the way, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Someone in the crowd called her a liar. And she said, no, I didn't lie. I was not dishonest. And this is where girls trade on what they characterize as truth. And I'm using air quotes for those of you listening. This chick indirectly contends that because she did not directly or proactively say or text anything that was untrue, that she didn't lie or that she was not dishonest and nothing could be further from the truth, guys. Women get away with lying like this all the time. They lie by omission. They tell you the truth, but they don't tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That is the, that is the very definition of dishonesty. If a bunch of girls showed up, let, let, let's switch the genders here. If a bunch of girls showed up to a bar expecting to meet one guy and they found out that he had invited 20 of them to compete for his love and affection, they would all feel tricked. They would all feel lied to as they should. And if the girls got upset and said, you lied to us. And he responded, I did not lie. I was never dishonest with any of you. They wouldn't sit back and say to themselves, you know what? He's got a point. He didn't tell us everything involved, but he never uttered a falsehood. So I guess we'll let him off the hook. I am not upset anymore. Of course not. So for a woman to expect men to do something that they clearly would be unwilling and incapable of doing is yet another case of the many gross exploitations of extreme female privilege in this country. If anyone confronted this girl face to face about the fact that she lied, she would say, well, technically, nothing I said was untrue. And if someone uses the word technically in their defense of an accusation, then they are automatically guilty, especially women. Anyway, so she gets up there and she announces, hey, you know, I'm here. All you guys are going to com compete for my attention. There, there's all kinds of videos about this on, on uh, YouTube. Then she starts eliminating people. And this is where the red pill truth really, really starts to come out. So her first elimination, she says, half of you are in relationships. You should leave now. So that was the first wave. Then she says, if you're uncomfortable with filming, I'm getting this all on camera, then you should leave now. Then she says, if you support Trump, then you should leave now because you can't date a Puerto Rican and support Donald Trump. Then she says, if you're a tourist or you don't live in the United States, you should leave now. 
Then she says, anyone named Jimmy, you should leave now. I just don't like the name Jimmy. Then she did this. This is unbelievable. This is, this is where she really, really puts female nature on full display. She says, she asked the crowd, she says, I, got, I want you guys to put up your left hand if any of you got broken up with by your last girlfriend. If any one of you got broken up by your last girlfriend, I want you to raise your left hand. Right? Bunch of guys raise their left hand. She says, okay, I want you to raise your right hand if you were the one that broke up with your girlfriend. Right? So after this was done, she says, okay, every man who raised their left hand, I want you to leave now. And she says, please leave because I trust her judgment. Gentlemen, this proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that women are hive-minded creatures, guys. We'll get into this later on tonight, but this just goes to show that girls don't want that. They don't want guys that get dumped by other girls. They think to themselves, well, she dumped him, so she must have had a good reason why. The girl said to herself, the girl said to everyone, I trust her judgment. And she does. Girls are hive-minded. What does that mean? It means that they are essentially one brain. If one girl thinks a certain way, then they all do. This is why the concept of pre-selection is absolutely paramount in dating. If you have pretty girls with you, then and girls see that you have pretty girls with you, they assume that they're with you for good reason. Doesn't matter what that reason is. If pretty girls are indirectly signing off on you, then that's all they need to see. Conversely, if you dumped her, she likes that. That shows you have options. That shows that you don't have one-itis. It shows you're not thirsty. It shows you're not gonna stay with a girl that you don't like anymore. And women respect men who walk away from other women. Next elimination. Anyone looking to just hook up, or if there's no dating potential, you can leave too, she said. <laughs> this is virtue signaling, guys. All girls do this. Why did she do this? So she doesn't look like a slut. She wants everyone there to think that she's never had a one night stand or a fling with a Tinder date. So she's doing in front of hundreds of people what millions of girls do all the time every day, knowing full well that they get on Tinder to do nothing but hook up. Girls want to be sluts without actually being called sluts, just like they want all the rewards of masculinity without having to pay the masculine cost. This is the same concept. Next elimination. Anyone under 5'10", you can leave now, she said. Now, here's the thing, guys. We can hate on that if we want to. But we eliminate girls based on the way they look. If we have nothing, listen, this is how it is, right? And here's the thing, if a girl has nothing to go on, she's going to default to the genetic markers of arousal. Tall, square-jawed, good-looking dudes. There are dudes who are five foot four who have more game than dudes who are 6'4". But because girls on Tinder have literally nothing to go on, but the way a man looks, of course she's going to do this. Hate on this all you, got, all you want to, guys. That's how it is. Now, at this point, she says, Brittany, I think we need more energy. This game is fun. This is fun. What that said to me was that these dudes are starting to understand that this chick is just a basic ass bitch. There's nothing special about her. They're standing around thinking to themselves, this bitch got us all out here. And now she's sending dudes home. She's doing it on camera, making a game out of it, making a game out of put, putting her pussy on the auction block to the highest bidder. This is some fucked up shit, but I want to fuck her. So I'll stick around, but I ain't going to act thirsty. I'm not going to jump for joy. That's what that meant. She wants dudes to be happy to compete for a slut. She wants dudes to be excited at the chance to compete for her. And she saw that they weren't, which makes her look bad. If, if, if the crowd sees that dudes are not excited to be with her, that makes her look bad. It's funny that she expected these dudes to be happy about this shit. It's just unbelievable. Then she, then she, then she went a little bit deeper. She said, no beer bellies, no long, no long beards, no khakis. Then she says, no alcoholics. Then she says, haha, no alcoholics, that's not fun. Then she says, also, no cigarettes. My health is important. Then she says, and no everyday weed smokers. So now we have an accurate profile of the guy this chick has been alpha widowed by. The guy she goes over and fucks whenever he decides he wants to fuck her. The guy who won't commit to her even though she throws herself at him. The guy she can't stop thinking about is a guy named Jimmy who's 6'1", 
has a long beard, smokes two packs a day, drinks a lot, wakes and, ba- and wakes and bakes seven days a week, and doesn't have much enthusiasm about having her as a fuck buddy. This is what this this is what this chick told us, guys. This is simply another case of the female id run amok. Other than the fact that she invited a bunch of dudes to compete for her and that she recorded the whole thing and broadcasted it live, there's nothing shocking or surprising about what she did. At least not as far as this community is concerned. The interesting thing is that most people, most of the people who seem shocked about this entire ordeal are men. If you ask the average woman about this, they probably wouldn't even give it a second thought because females know how females are. But 95% of men have no idea what females are really like. That's why they're shocked by this. Oh my God, women are really like this? The only reason why it caused us in the Red Pill community to raise our eyebrows is because we've never seen a woman so brazenly act like this. We've never seen a woman do something like this on this level, record it and broadcast it. But let's be real, guys. What this bitch did didn't surprise anyone. Didn't surprise anyone in here. We know women do this all the time, every day. And a lot of times they'll tweet about it, put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram. All the shock and the outrage that we are seeing from people online and in that video is indicative of how clueless men are about women. What this chick did is what girls do on a daily basis. Girls swipe right on a bunch of guys and they eliminate them one by one based on the way they look. Then they claim to not want to hook up, not want alcoholics or drug dealers or players or criminals or any of the traits that the bad boy alphas they can't stop fucking to save their lives possess. But at the end of the day, no matter how much they say they don't want these, no matter how much they say they don't want these bad boys or assholes or fuck boys, these are the guys they end up going home with. This little stunt that she pulled, it, yeah, I'll admit it raised my eyebrows a little bit. There's no doubt about it. But I wasn't the least bit shocked or surprised by what she did or how she did it. Because this is the way women operate day in, day out, guys. The only difference is they do it behind closed doors. This chick just did it in front of cameras in New York City, right? Other than those two differences, she is the same as every other basic ass bitch out there, no matter how much she wants to think she's not. Having a hundred guys show up to compete, to go on a date with you, doesn't prove that you're special or unique or worthy of men competing over you. It simply proves male thirst and the ease with which it is manipulated in 2018 by females. That's it.